Hey guys, Mike Chen here in San Jose, California, home to some of the best Vietnamese food in the country. I'm gonna start out my breakfast today with a really interesting bowl of pho at Pho San Jose. Sitting in front of me is a bowl of pho innovation. This is a bowl of smoked brisket pho. The brisket they use, they only use the point end, which is the fattiest part of the brisket. That is smoked for 17 hours. Then it's sliced up and you can see the beautiful smoke ring on every single slice of this brisket. Also the broth is simmered for 20 hours. And what they do that's really unique is that they roast the bones first. So you get more of that concentrated beefy flavor. As I'm talking, my mouth is watering so much because I'm smelling this. I smelled the bones when it first came out of the oven. And then finally the bone drippings is collapsed collected and then torched and added to this bowl as well. So I'm expecting an extremely beefy, very fatty bowl of pho. Oh, it smells so good. Wow. Before this mind-blowing broth, and I mean it is mind-blowing, even touched my tongue. I first got hit by that uber beefy fragrance and the smoke. One sip of this will absolutely overwhelm your senses. From the smoke to that concentrated beef soup and that tingle on your tongue from the pepper, it's almost too much. I think this might be the most intense flavor I ever had, and it's for sure one of the best bowl of pho I've ever had. This is amazing. I haven't even tried the meat yet. And usually I'm, after a few sips of broth, I'm adding sriracha already. But holy moly, I just want to keep sipping on this. The broth is also so clear and light, but the flavor bomb that's inside this. <sighs> Let me try this brisket. Mm -hmm. That is a tender, melt in your mouth. Very smoky by the brisket. Mm. All that smoky flavor has infused into the noodles as well. This is pho innovation at its finest. Again, I don't really feel like I need the sriracha. I'm getting the spice from the peppers. Also, there's a sriracha shortage right now, so Tabasco sriracha? Yeah, definitely not as good as the original. But like I said, you don't need it in this. If you guys are around San Jose, you gotta come try this ball of pho. Not even exaggerating a little bit. This thing will leave you speechless. Also, you got a second bowl of the original pho. This thing, besides the mountain of meat that's already in here, they also add beef fingers. So these, this is the meat between the ribs of the beef. That's the most tender and flavorful part. Before taking a bite of that, little palate cleanser, shrimp donuts. Mm. Oh, this is so good too. Really light and crispy exterior. Shrimp paste on the inside. So it's tender, it's crispy. And what you can do, put some herbs, wrap it in some lettuce. Mm. Now, trying the regular pho. This is so good as well. It's a little less beefy and definitely not as smoky as the cowboy pho. But these guys, they really know how to extract that really nice beef flavor from the bones. These are definitely some of the beefiest bowls of pho I've ever had. I'm really surprised there's not a line out the door for this. Especially that cowboy pho. That's gotta be one of my favorite bowls of pho of all time. Mm. Beef finger. Mmm. This thing is incredible. I mean, it just melts in your mouth. And there's so many different layers. There's fat, there's lean meat. The flavor is intense. Mmm. Oh my goodness. That's like a little additional beef bomb in this bowl of bomb beefy broth. They also were nice enough to bring an additional little bowl of pure marrow. Add that into the pho. Mm. That's just nature's beef butter right there. Mm. First time eating so much pho without any sriracha. It's that good. Also a little ambitious today because everything's been so good. I got the dry pho. Inside there's shrimp, there's chicken, there's a fried egg, minced meat all on top of dry noodle. If you really want to retain the springiness of the noodles, this is the noodle dish to get. Plus, you get a set of broth anyway. 
Mm. Everything is so good. If I lived in San Jose, I'd be here all the time. Mm. The meat quality is so good. The flavor is top notch. I'm gonna dip some of these noodles into this bowl of marrow. This is gonna be a pretty intense bite. Mm. I love it. Dip anything you want into that marrow. It's just gonna come out better on the other side. First bowl of pho after coming back to San Jose. This has definitely been an experience. Next food stop brings me all the way to Oakland. Heard about this Chinese deli? It's supposed to be amazing. So Oaks Deli here in Oakland, they make some remarkable sandwiches. This is a mala Sichuan fried chicken sandwich. And it's not sitting on any boring old bun, it's sitting on toasted sesame bun. So it's kind of like eating a sesame pancake with a fried chicken sandwich. And the way they cook it, after it's deep fried, it's dunked into hot oil, brought up, covered in chilies and peppercorn. And what I already noticed about this, this juice on the chicken is not steeping through the bun. And sesame pancakes, honestly, one of my favorite things in the world. And even before taking a bite of this, I think this is gonna be really freaking good. Wow. I love the heck out of this. You could either do normal or spicy i got spicy of course i feel like my mouth is on fire and i couldn't be happier mm. first of all that chicken it's a masterpiece so juicy and tender and the outside breading just a light a subtle crunch and that spice is meant to punish you but also not take away from any of the flavors of the sandwich. I mean, it's spicy, it's numbing, my tongue is tinkling from the peppercorn, and the sesame bun is so chewy and delicious, and that sesame, of course, adds a lot of flavor as well. Oh, I forgot. A little crunchy Chinese pickles in here as well. If you love the mala flavor profile, you will absolutely adore this. And also, they brought over some hot sauce. I'm not saying this isn't hot enough already, but let's add some and give it a taste. This is a marvel of a sandwich. Absolutely love this. Next one I want to try is your EB sandwich. Fried filet of shrimp, some cabbage on top. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I know I've had many uh, EB sandwiches at fast food places. Hey, nothing like this. Just like the chicken sandwich, it's fried so well. It's so amazingly delicate inside. With just a tiny burst of crunch from the outside breading. The flavor is intricate, it's light, it's shrimpy. Oh my gosh. Now let's add some hot sauce to this. This is the habanero hot sauce. Mmm. Well, oh, that hot sauce works really well on this as well. Also, the sesame bun for me. The more sesame, the better. So this is really the perfect bun for me. But this just tastes like the lightest shrimp katsu. And also, you got that sweet, crunchy, juicy cabbage on top to kind of mellow out any of the oiliness. This is a must try. Last sandwich, this is a Spam sandwich. And inside there's some daikons, there's cilantro, there's tons of cucumbers, and they make their Spam in-house. It's thin, it's grilled. Mm. This is really good as well. The Spam is way more porky. It definitely doesn't fall apart as much as the, the typical mystery meat. And the pickled daikons and the cucumbers really balances out the fattiness and the saltiness of the Spam very well. That's a really solid sandwich. I think my favorite thing, if you're in the mood for spicy, get the mala chicken. If you're in the mood for just a delicious sandwich without burning a ton off, get the ebi. I think those two are definitely my favorite, but it's so interesting to come to a deli that serves these types of sandwiches. Oh, one more thing I got. I got a chocolate chip sesame cookie. That is the perfect final touch to this awesome deli meal. Definitely one of the best spicy chicken sandwiches I've ever had, and for sure the best Ebby sandwich I've ever had. 
last food place today, it's gotta be something sweet. So I am at Inner Sunset and, oh, I got a line. There's a pineapple bun bakery that opened up. Look at all the people waiting for a delicious pineapple bun. And they got all sorts of different flavors. Pineapple bun with chocolate marshmallow butter, salted egg butter, mango. I think this is gonna be really good. The wind has definitely picked up. Got a cup of hot milk tea and look at these buns. I waited about 30 minutes in line for these pineapple buns. And I consider myself lucky because they have these things called um, baguette pudding, I think. And they're only served at 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. And you have to line up for them and they sell out fast. They're limited to two a person. Looks like a hollow out baguette roll with custard inside. It's not as piping hot as I thought it was. I mean, the baguette's nice. I feel like maybe if this was hotter and liquidier, like it was shown on picture, I think that would have been better. I mean, it's not bad. Custard's good, bread's good. I think I just expected more. Look at this. I'm gonna start with this one. This is the pineapple bun with papaya butter. Signature of a pineapple bun. Beautiful sugary crust on top. Contrary to the name, pineapple buns don't actually have any pineapples inside. Mm. This place is called the Pineapple King. All I gotta say is all Hail the King. This is by far the best pineapple bun I've ever had in my life. It's so amazing. The guava butter is melty, it's sweet, it's fruity, it's creamy. And this bun is just so crusty and light. And this will rule all over your taste buds. It's that good. Chase that with some milk tea. Holy moly, that was good. I mean, I've had plenty of pineapple buns in my day. I never expected it to taste like this. This next one is the salted egg butter. As soon as I finished eating the last pineapple bun, every part of my body started to crave another one. Mmm. Oh, salted egg is delicious. It's savory, it's creamy, it's sweet. This is pure addiction. They also have this, this is a cream puff. So a pineapple bun puff, there's mango inside. Mmm. <laughs> that custard is marvelous. Basically tastes like a mango puree. Of course, sitting on that buttery, creamy, flaky bun. I am so excited for this next one. This is a s'mores pineapple bun. Chocolate marshmallow stuffed inside a pineapple bun. Oh. This basically tastes like an Asian camping trip. Gooey chocolate and marshmallows. Like, damn, this is the best, most perfectly baked pineapple bun I've ever experienced in my life. Something that could be so crusty on top and just delightfully flaky and buttery and soft inside. Oh, this thing just leaked chocolate over my hands. Can't waste that on a napkin. Let me make sure to get a milk tea to eat this with. But if you are a lover of pineapple buns, if you have no idea what the heck a pineapple bun is, come here and try this out. This is 100% worth the wait. Highly, highly, highly recommend. This is definitely going on my best of San Francisco list. And that's it for my first day here in the San Francisco Bay Area. As always, all the places I went to listed down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.